Archery has its use cases for hunting, but quite frankly, most bows suck for self-defense. In a life or death situation when seconds count, their slow reload speed is gonna diminish their effectiveness against aggressive, fast-moving targets. But today we're gonna to be demonstrating an archery platform that allows you to shoot arrows at an insane speed with accuracy and precision. Reusable ammunition, reliability, and stealth are going to make this a formidable post-collapse weapon system. Because when the lights go out and the cops go on permanent vacation, your ass is on your own. So let's head out to the new archery range and light it up. All right, so today on the channel, we are checking out the Anvil Auto Reloading Compound Bow. Yes, you heard right, Auto Reloading Compound Bow. Now, this has actually been out for a while. We've reviewed tactical, folding, SAS, survival bows, all kinds of bows on the channel. I have to say, this is one of the funnest ones to shoot for a variety of reasons. And I know what you're thinking, it's probably a gimmick. But of all of the auto reloading bows that I've shot, I would have to say this is probably the most practical for short range. So if you actually wanted a bow for home defense, and I know that sounds crazy to our American friends, we have guns here in Canada, make no mistake about it. But if you did want a bow for self-defense, the problem with bows, recurve bows, compound bows, is they still take a long time to load unless you are an archery master and you've mastered the technique of holding your arrows in your hat. My first impression of the bow is once you get a familiarity of how it functions, how you put the arrows in, how it all works, it looks very complex, but it's actually quite user friendly. And I think that something like this will last a long time. One of my issues with prepping items is I always want something that's built to last a long time. My gripe with compound bows and anything with a pulley system has always been the reliability factor. But of course you make up for it with ergonomics and increased power and accuracy. So those are trade-offs. Uh, I used to be a recurve purist where I would only want to get a recurve bow because that was the most reliable, it'll never break on you. You could remake your strings, no problem. Unless you have a bow press and are a professional archer, you're likely not gonna be able to manufacture your own compound bow strings. I would say that this is both a gadget and a gimmick for the reason that using this for hunting, the power isn't quite there for hunting larger game at reasonable distances. As you'll see in our demonstration today, you're able to get significant penetration at 25 to 30 yards. With a 250 feet per second, I believe this is 250 to 300 feet per second bow, you know, that's definitely, you can kill something with that, make no mistake about it, but you have to be very good at stalking. You have to be a very experienced hunter in order to get that close to an animal. The thing I will say about this though, is once you get it sighted in with that red dot sight, it's incredibly easy to shoot. Unfortunately, they sent me what would be a right hand bow. And uh, that's great for most people. If you're right eye dominant, I'm left eye dominant. But the thing with this bow is I can get behind it because the draw length isn't that long. With a lot of bows, that draw length is coming way back. But I can actually get behind this and I can see the target with both eyes, which is kind of neat. It's a good sight, you know, that they, it's, it's good stock stuff. I mean, this is a collector's item, if anything. If you're a person who collects bows, I mean, you're gonna wanna have a compound auto reloading bow. And there's very few misfires. If you ever have a misfire, I find that it's always on the first arrow because you didn't place the first arrow properly. Once you get it set in there, it's like butter. It's super smooth. There's enough tension on there to hold the arrows in. And once you have the arrows in there it doesn't move around so you can walk through you know the woods if you want you can have it pretty much ready to go and all you have to do to caulk it is just pull it back and there's a trigger release there and very easy to use 
I would say that the build quality is there. It comes with all of the dampeners and uh, noise reducers. There's a few pick rails on there, so you could put a flashlight, you could put a red dot, you can buy different accessories for it. There's a few other attachment points on the back here. I don't even know what this is for because this is a first impression of the bow, so we're gonna take it inside afterwards. And I believe that if you wanted to increase the power, which we probably should do to do this test justice, if you want to increase the power, you just torque down on the limbs a bit more, and that's going to give you more power. And it looks like we definitely could be doing that a little bit more, and that'd probably give us, you know, 10, 20 more feet per second, which is very significant. All right, so in terms of home defense, bows are obviously a no-no for a variety of reasons, but if we're talking Mad Max, the ammo is run out. I would have to say that I would want this more than the Siege compound bow. Maybe not, well, it's hard to say, maybe not more, but there's several benefits to this. With the Siege compound bow, there's a lot more range of motion that's required to reload it. So you gotta turn it and then you gotta cock it and you gotta go like this. This thing, you could literally sit there, go back, shoot, forward, go back, shoot forward. So you're only doing this. With the siege bow, if you remember, and we'll show it over the screen here, there's more movements and then you gotta get back in position and do this. So you could shoot far more arrows in a shorter period of time with this. Well, this is the only auto reloading compound bow on the market. Let's just get that out of the way. This is probably the fastest plug and play compound bow shooting platform. So there's something to be said about that, right? And in close quarters, you're really not looking for extreme amounts of power. Within 15, 20 meters, 250 feet per second will do just fine for anything, two-legged or four-legged. It's when you start going out to those greater ranges. Uh, if you're in a tree stand and it's 15 feet in the air, then that's already 15 feet off the ground. So then you add on the distance to the animal and you know, I'm not saying it's not possible. It's very possible to, to get that close to an animal. I'm just saying it limits your options if this is your only option out there in the very short hunting season that we have. If you're somebody who's privileged to have a property like I do and you just walk outside and there's deers drinking out of the pond, then it's easy, right? This makes sense. I like it. The company sent me this. Would I buy one personally? Yeah, I'd buy one just because I would like the novelty factor. I think this is one of those cool things, you know, when you have somebody over and you wanna show them something cool, this is a good conversation starter. I do think there's practicality here as well, but mainly for home defense. I suppose if you were hunting geese, the benefit would be the auto reloading factor. Typically, of course, you're hunting geese with shotguns, but around here, you can get pretty close to a goose. Uh, one of the communist cameramen just Ask me about compactability. As you can see, once it's cocked, it's it stays still, right? Maneuverability, it's it's one-dimensional. Actually, I'd say it's two-dimensional, right? It's big this way and it's big this way, but it's not big this way. And that's the difference between this and a crossbow, is that it has that unwieldy three-dimensionality to it. This you can actually kind of walk through a narrow space with it. It's still far more unwieldy than a firearm, obviously, because you have that two dimensions. You know, in terms of bows, it's really as good as it's gonna get. And because it's a compound, it's a compact frame. So if you had a recurve bow, you know, that sucker is way out to here, right? Or a long bow is, is even worse. And most compound bows actually are bigger than this. At least the ones that I've used are slightly bigger than this. So that's something to keep in mind. Let's go do some shooting, let's quit talking. Raccoon groundhog, five meters. Turkey, 10 meters. Wild boar, 15 meters. Black bear, 20 meters. Deer, 25 meters. A very small beta moose, 30 meters. An elk, 35 meters. Now, as you can see, before I start this, because I'm not right eye dominant, I have to look all the way back. When I'm looking, I'm actually looking, I'm crossing over and I'm looking through my left eye. So that takes more time. But if you're right eye dominant, you're probably gonna be able to do what I'm doing a lot faster, okay? Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go for speed and we're gonna go for the bear who's at 20 meters. I'm not really going for accuracy here. 
I'm just going for speed. Let's see what we can do. I'm going kind of for accuracy because I don't want to just miss the bear, but let's see what we can do, okay? All right, now <laughs> that was for speed plus accuracy. If I was just doing spray and pray, I could have did that a lot faster. In fact, we'll maybe try that next time, but actually I'm kind of impressed. Let's go check out how I did over here. Ah! Got some decent precision, a little high and to the right, but uh, for not really focusing too much on being accurate, obviously uh, an actual full-size bear at this range, that would be well within the vitals area. The question is, would it have the power to penetrate both the fur and the ribs? Uh, maybe. Let's see how much penetration we had. So we had about that much penetration, so that's actually pretty good. These are pretty good foam targets, okay? They're not, like, they're not easy to pull out of, but they're also not difficult. So we're getting about, I don't know, what would she say that is? <laughs> Five or six, I don't know. Six on a good day. So now we'll go for accuracy. Okay, so I had two arrows that lost a lot of elevation and I don't know if that's because they just didn't have enough kinetic energy or what. I'm definitely shooting too much to the right, so we gotta go to the left. I'm still quite satisfied with that level of precision. I'm not sure what happened with these two. Um, I know that I'm trying to shoot a little bit high, so I have to properly sight this thing in. That's the problem, so that's what we're gonna do. My shots are going to the right of the target. I want to go left. So we're going to go left a little bit, which is, I think that should do it. I'm going to give it one more. The bow is actually very accurate. It's just, it's very difficult for me to hold it stably. I don't really have the motor skills yet to work with this bow. I'm confident that if I shot it a lot, it would be a lot easier. But the reason why I'm not getting that precision every time is because I'm trying to shoot with this eye here. This is my good eye over here. So I have to get my head all the way behind this thing which is possible, but it makes kind of an unstable platform. Whereas if I was right here, it would be a lot more stable and that's what you're supposed to do. So you want to cheek up to it, right? So that gives you more stability when you can cheek up to it and that's how you're supposed to shoot it. But because I'm trying to do this gymnastic shit, it's not as accurate, but you can see, let's go see. I got a couple bullseyes here. Definitely, uh, Three within the kill range, one dead center, all lung shots, one heart shot. Well, it's an accurate bow, it really is. It's just my shooting technique. You can see, like, look at how close, look at how tight this group is. One, two, three, four, within two inches. You know, so it's definite. And yes, don't laugh at me. My son put the insert in upside down. So. <laughs> All right, so now we're gonna do the elk and I'm really just trying to figure out the accuracy thing.
you want to pick one of these up, go check out gogun.co or go through the link in the description below. Thanks for watching Canadian Prepper Out. The best way to support this channel is to support yourself by gearing up at CanadianPreparedness.com, where you'll find high quality survival gear at the best prices, no junk, and no gimmicks. Use discount code Prepping Gear for 10% off. Don't forget the strong survive, but the prepared thrive. Stay safe.